and as the music fades, we're back again. We're back live, uh, multi uh, streaming across, I, as far as I can understand, pretty much everywhere. I think we may have a bit of a tech problem over in Rumble, but we're on Facebook, we're in YouTube, we're on Twitter, uh, Getter. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're everything. We're, we're basically everywhere. So you're you're very welcome uh, to to the stream tonight. This this what uh, this show we're going to have. It should have happened. Um, Gosh, about three or four weeks ago, I think it was. But as you remember, there was a, a temporary interruption to my voice, which meant that the, the, the live shows had to temporarily come to a halt. So, uh, but as you all know by now, the voice is back. And I've got some great guests, not least the one who is a, who's sitting quietly in the background there. I can see her. Uh, and uh, but, but just before we get the, the show going, um, can we just um, take a second or two and pay attention to our great uh, uh, supporter uh, and uh, that is Quantum Hypno whose ad is about to run. Pay attention. I work with the greatest, most powerful force in the universe. It can help you with anything such as mental, emotional and physical trauma. This beautiful, healing, loving energy can be harnessed and fully integrated through the miracle of hypnosis. Why spend years trying to improve your life and affect change while this life-changing therapy takes just one session? It has such an enormous impact on people's lives. It can remove any addiction in an instant because we find the source of the problem. Your life has a purpose. My mission is to bring this knowledge and awareness to you today. There's never been a better time to reach your highest potential and be the best that you can be. So what are you waiting for? Now's the time to make your dreams a reality. Expand your mind and your heart in just one session. There you go, Quantum Hypno. Uh, Sarah Jane is a, a lovely person and you should definitely check out her, uh, her site below. And I see you joining and some of you are watching in multiple channels. How do you even do that? Do you not go goggle-eyed? Leslie Butler, I see you over on YouTube. See you over in the getters. John, Jack, Jack. Uh, hello all from Sonny Luton. Is that global boiling you're getting in Luton there, uh, John Gleason? Because if so, you need to watch out for the global boiling. Anyway. We got we got we got a lot of stuff to talk about, and I'm really pleased to bring uh, to introduce you to a lady whose name you may have heard over the last couple of years, uh, because she had the misfortune, if you want or whatever, to be uh, running trying to run a, a, a successful successful business in in Wales, and uh, well, I'm afraid. Um, that was kind of uh, a wrong country during the years of COVID tyranny. Uh, let, without further ado, let me introduce you all to Anna Redford. Redford. Hi, Anna. Hi, David. Yes. Yeah, nice no, your voice back. Yes. No, I'm, I'm, so am I. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure my wife would completely agree with you, but uh, <laughs> she, 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 yeah, you can imagine her situation. So, uh, yeah, no, it's good. It's good to be back. And uh, as I say, Anna, really, really pleased to get talking to you because, I mean, maybe just to start with, let's just paint a little context. As I say, this is multiple. This is on multiple platforms. Um, so some people will may, probably the Brits probably know have heard of your story, maybe, um, and some of the Americans may not. Just give us a slight, a little potted, very sort of uh, succinct summary of, of of yourself and and and, and the cinema and co business. Um, well, yes, I've been running Cinema Co for seven years now. I call it my baby. I feel like uh, it's a vehicle for all my ideas. Um, and um, when COVID, when we first went into lockdown, I was actually on a call singing holiday in Morocco. And um, I finally got to a place in my business where I could leave it for 10 days. I had a whole team doing everything for me. And um, yeah. And um, yeah, it came back to a lockdown in Britain. Ironically, the first film we had to cancel was George Orwell, 1984. Uh -huh. There was a message. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. Um, yeah, and as time went on, it was always a gut feeling for me that uh, something 
wasn't right. And uh, because I had a a children's rights background, I was acutely aware of our rights. And of course, uh, the legislation kept changing, the guidance kept changing. And because we're a multifaceted venue, depending on what hats we were wearing would depend what Mm -hmm. guidance we had to follow. And um, it just got to a point where I could not pretend to comply anymore out of fear of losing my business and it just went totally against my moral compass as well and um then uh wales introduced the covid passports that cinemas had to um ask yeah. them and that's when i just thought enough is enough um and i basically uh released a manifesto saying um how discriminatory the uh, scheme was how nonsensical it was and how we wouldn't be uh we wanted to be advocates of freedom of choice we trusted our customers if they weren't very well they'd stay at home and uh, we just thought it's a total invasion of uh privacy you know it's mm-hmm. none of our business you've been vaccinated or not and uh, so I made uh, this stand on social media within three days it had pretty much gone around the world was liked thousands of times and uh, got so many messages about being a beacon of light and finally someone yeah. with uh, common sense and um, then on Beaujolais day of all days this was three days after making this announcement um, the council swooped and uh, closed me down uh, under the guise that I was a threat to public health so um and uh Beaujolais I don't know you probably haven't heard of it in Ireland but it's um where oh. everyone get goes out and gets absolutely rat ass to celebrate the new grape and well, it's only Beaujolais but it's the second biggest money spinner after Christmas in South Wales so there's a democracy <laughs> there as yeah. well so you know there's uh venues uh down the road but because they weren't classed as a cinema, they uh, could have a higher capacity, yet I was being forced to uh, implement the COVID passport scheme because I was a cinema. So, um, so yeah, that's when it all uh, started. And they try, and I, they scared all my staff off, so it was literally just me. And the next day, my cafe was full of people from all walks of life, all political persuasions, all helping me in my time of need. And um, all this was going on simultaneously while I was caring for my dying mum as well. So, um, so yes, it's a very tough time, um, but uh, I, I soldiered on and uh, they fined me uh, £15,000. Um, but so they cl- tried several times to close me down. It actually resulted in uh, the council, under order of Mark Drakeford, uh, bolting my shutters to the ground yeah, at I remember. Yeah. Five in the morning, uh, the time I was putting my mum, dying mum, on the commode. Um, and um, yeah, it was just, and that this was a few days before Swansea declared itself Wales' first human rights city so uh again the, the hypocrisy has been a running theme so i ended up uh, having to go to the magistrate's court um i was unable to adjourn the case being on mum being mum's full-time carer um and they basically if i didn't plead guilty i'd have gone to, to jail yeah. for prison and I was kind of left high and dry because uh, they wanted to make an example of me. They wanted to scare all the other businesses into mm. compliance, and it really worked, you know. Um, but yes, I got a suspended prison sentence at that time as well. Um, and then I put in an appeal uh, against the fines, and uh, my mum died the day my appeal was due to be heard in the Crown Court and again um, adjourning it for that reason proved quite uh, very difficult. It even became apparent that they were after my inheritance as well Um, 
And um, after getting failed legal representation twice, uh, I found it really difficult to find legal representation because uh, nobody would touch my case with a barge pole. I even had one barrister say he didn't want to bite the hand that feeds him. So at least he was honest enough to say that. But uh, yeah. the Council, yeah. the council are renowned nationwide for being corrupt um, and uh, yeah, so uh, in the end, it didn't f even feel as if my solicit my own solicitor was on my side. And I had um, uh, heard of her because she was in the Daily Mail for getting lots of businesses in England off COVID related fines. But mm -hmm. um, yes, it's a very different kettle of fish in Wales under Mark uh, Dickford, as I've come to call him now. But there's a directive he wrote just for me that is still on the Welsh Government website that I've got framed in the cafe about uh, closing me down because I'm a, a threat to public health. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell. But uh, <laughs> you, you know, honestly, Anna, it's such a... A fascinating and disturbing and sickening um, thing that you went through, and and I, I vividly remember it. And I'm sure that that, that the many people that will watch this, a, a lot of us will re remember that. I can remember sitting down talking to my anti-lockdown friends the, at the time, and I remember we were all talking about, oh yeah, did you see the story about that that cinema in Swansea? And it was you we were talking about. And, and again, it was like. God, is that what they're actually doing? Is, is this what the Welsh government is actually investing its time in? And uh, and and yeah, the stuff. And you know, I as I said, I have I followed your your story, and and I remember the like when it came to the your state when you said we don't think that closing and you know or or, or sorry, COVID passports are are the way forward. Um, What's wrong with the Welsh people that they didn't all come to support you? Because I saw lots of bitchy comments saying, well, she needs to be sorted out because she she's not keeping us safe, which was all obviously complete nonsense. Yeah, it's a uh, beggar's belief, really. I just uh, can't understand it myself. But there seems to be a real apathy in mm. Wales. And, you know, it's a, a one party country and we'll will always be it seems um but um you know even my own friendship circle has changed uh several times since making my stand and yeah. um you know politics uh, we get labeled by other people's politics and what happened to me was i got accused of the very thing i was standing up against you know i've been labeled uh, an anti-semite for hosting david ike um i've been uh, uh, labeled anti-nhs for hosting um a conspiracy film as the metro called it um but yes i'm apparently i'm a, a racist i'm a homophobe and uh, all these labels which are um, in the 60s, it was all about dispelling the labels, but these days there's more than ever, isn't there? And, and was was that sort of Welsh people, Swansea people that were saying that about you, Anna? Who was saying these kind of things? Well, um, even uh, friends of mine, I get people who um, I consider friends who won't even supply me anymore. Um, I, I've got friends who cross the road if they see me coming. Um, but it, it's a that's a very small uh, group. But it's yeah, um, yeah. it's sparked off a real culture war, I guess. Yeah. Um, in uh, just on one street. So at our end, or I'm the, the libertarian then, if you like, and then the uh, venues that are sponsored by the Welsh government and the council, or i.e. the far left, as I've come to call them. Yeah, yeah. Um, you no, know, they're the ones who are um, shouting and the, all these labels and being all accusatory, yet uh, they're being hypocritical because they're, you know, um, accusing me of the very thing that they... Uh, protest, protest against yeah. you know. Yeah. So. That, that, that's what they, that's what they do, Anna. They project. Uh, it, it's it's just how they are. They project all their feverish bigotries onto people like us. That that that's just the, the the way it is. But but just talk me through. So you were saying, you know, so we 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 got the whole stupid lockdown thing happening in the UK, 
and and then all the fear and all the masks and on in the summer of 2020 and then that led into later on then obviously you know the uh the, the mandates and stuff w was your cinema were you open during that period what happened during that time sort of sort of spring to december 2020 with you yeah, so we weren't allowed to open. So uh, we were, uh, cinemas were allowed to open in Wales on May the 17th, 2021. And uh, I even went on Radio Wales as a, um, a business that had chosen not to open and was interviewed as a camp campsite owner in North Wales. And mm -hmm. uh, they were all like, oh, it's great that we can open again. We can have more campers. We could open our shower block. And then uh, there was me uh, saying about it being an infringement of our rights and mm -hmm. an invasion of our mm -hmm. privacy. And uh, because it's a live show at half past six in the morning, they could not wait to get me off the phone because of course I was talking against the narrative. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, field they use the, the early show to get sound bites to form the rest of it, and nobody heard me on the radio. You know, and it's a national, uh, national yeah. channel. <laughs> yeah, I think we've actually. I see we've got a customer, one of your customers. I can see in the YouTube studio saying, "Whenever I have the time, I go to cinema and go and have some tea." There we go. Uh, oh, there you go. Blitzer, uh, who presumably lives somewhere in the general vicinity uh, around you. But uh, yeah, I so, like his um, profile picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, th the thing is that uh, you know that there was a whole group of us back then who in different ways fought back but um but your way of fighting back particularly with regard to saying look i i, I don't want i i'm, I'm not going to accept COVID passports i'm not going to ask for COVID passports um so you see your customers would, would did, did, did any of them bring COVID passports or were, what was it a was it a free a free a free, a free uh, thinking group of people who said no saw that yeah, so, um, you know, it's a, still a, a very much a place where you can uh, come and uh, voice your own opinions and not get judged yeah. for it. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, we had a few uh, nervous people, you know, inquiring about whether they needed to show them. But, um, but yeah, we've been really struggling to get uh, bums on seats because of the pandemic. It's really killed yeah. cinema. Um, yeah. So I, I guess um, in that regard, I've never had so many customers. And, uh, yeah. yeah, people travelled from all over the country to uh, yeah. give their support. I remember some visitors from Ireland, actually actually uh, yeah. uh stopping yeah. by and uh yes it was a really it really did give me the strength to uh continue fighting uh this but uh but, that's the thing why is it still a battle you know <laughs> yeah but 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 Anna, I, I i mean you know trying to run a business and, and 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 make a profit is hard enough especially if you're an independent business and in your case i guess your your competition is the big the big um, movie houses and whatnot. So it's it's really hard just to to do it anyway. And then comes along all these stupid regulations. And then the, the what, what I put in the little introduction, like you were you were prosecuted and you were persecuted both by by this ridiculous government that you've got in in, in Wales. I mean, how did that how did that make you feel? When you would have seen all this stuff coming in, you know, from the government, from the council on you, how how did you, how did you feel yeah. about that? Yeah, and I guess I still feel it, you know. I, I've been, so I've done so much for Swansea. Like uh, Swansea went for the City of Culture bid a few years ago, and I was invited to all the consultations on culture, what is culture, and um, I was even invited as a, a guest speaker because I was regarded as a change maker at the City Centre Conference, which is supposed to showcase all the independent businesses, how we yeah. can work together to achieve positive change and all that um but as a result of my stand uh, i got cancelled from that and um yeah they just um it feels as if they won't stop until my business goes under um and mm -hmm. uh, to this day i've got a noise abatement notice slapped on my uh, business now so i can't have any more lucrative um dj nights or live music which would to be honest, very few and far between anyway. And, you know, it's trying to diversify because of the industry's really um, suffered as a result of these restrictions. So, 
I've, I've, I've got to say, Anna, I used to go to the cinema regularly uh, to, to watch a lot of the, you know, the, through the blockbuster, the Marvel movies I used to go to uh, um, and then all of that. That all stopped. That all stopped for me back in 20, uh, 2020. I've not been I've not been since not to see one thing. And that's because I despise all the wokery, all the lecturing, the patronizing that that's and the only movie that I've watched. And I just watched it at home on TV was I see someone put it up there. Top Gun Maverick. I, I watched it uh, on the basis. Oh, there you go. There's a just a just. Uh, publicizing uh, Anna's uh, uh, venue. Here we go, film and pizza events. Um, but yeah, Anna, so so I reckon a chunk of people, I would say the awakened people, I think we have kind of walked away from a lot of cinema. Uh, what, what's your view on that? Well, um, funnily enough, all the when I first made my stand, um, and as a result of being closed down, all the major film studios didn't want to be associated with my organization <laughs> so yeah. I would they wouldn't uh, underwrite uh, the license to show any of their their films um, mm. but it is it definitely is a shift change I guess uh, the pandemic's compounded people's bad habits you know they either built their own home cinema during lockdown mm. or they're just mm. used to everything's on demand now you can watch whatever you like at uh, the touch of a button can't you so um, well you so can yeah, you can, Anna, but what I think you provide are, are valuable services. The thing that I enjoyed about going to the, the cinema pre-COVID was there was that mixing of humanity. There was the buzz, all the stuff that goes around the experience, and then there's the movie itself, and hopefully it's good and hopefully it's not, but or hope or hopefully it's not. But um, but but that, that that was the buzz, the humanity. And so therefore, whenever like the the the, the Welsh government try to essentially shut you down stop it like like that's an i see that as an attack on on, on humanity or common humanity that is or human beings wanting to mix with other human beings because i think it's so natural that we want to do that so the movies is a great place to go but again such as the impact of covid on 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 people like me anyway there's no way i'd go back to one of those big movie houses anyway not going to happen no, they're very impersonal, aren't they? And um, I liken this place to Cheers, you must remember. I do, I do. Yeah, yeah. 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 Where, where everybody knows your name. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and yeah, it really feels like that. And that's what the pandemic is all about, was stopping us doing things that make us feel feel human. And, mm. you know, um, going to the cinema should be a, a social experience that yeah. uh, you yeah. share with others. Hmm. You know, it absolutely should be. And and, and that was why I, I went, I mean, I think the last movie I went to see before COVID was Joker. I remember going to see Joker and it was, it was, I liked it because it was dark and all of that there. Um, but then since then, I mean, I, honestly, I, I, for example, I had I, I was speaking to uh, a, a lady on, on Monday and we were, she was critiquing the Barbie movie, the Barbie movie, which I think has been the biggest, it's the most popular movie of 2023, I think, so far, kind of blockbuster. But she, we were just chatting about it and saying, it's just, you know, it's patronizing feminazi village. And, and mm -hmm. it, it's, is that entertainment now? Is, is that what it is? Because if so, only some people, not everyone will want to see that. No, it's a very uh, narcissistic uh, society we live in uh, these yeah. days, and uh, especially from us being, uh, I don't like using the word victim, but uh, victim of the cancel culture, um, it's uh, like being accused of being a, a transphobe and the, the tran trans movement, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are more uh, pressing problems in the world than what pronouns to use and um it's uh yeah it's all very superficial these things that are worth protesting about so we had a katie hopkins stand-up comedy show here oh, uh, about okay. yeah. three months ago and yeah. um it, this caused such civil unrest uh, uh, locally. So a protest was organised. It was yeah. shared 60 times. My neighbours' names were on their friends. And um, uh, so it's organised by Stand Up to Racism. And oh, yeah. 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 To get 
fascism as well. And um, yeah, so uh, Katie's first night, 60 people uh, stood opposite with placards saying BLM, um, refugees welcome here. And they're chanting out of a PA, Nazi scum, get off our streets in my direction. They mm -hmm. And um, the hypocrisy of it, because the diversity of the crowd we had, and they just couldn't believe what they were seeing, that there's yeah. all this, um, um, uh, so I'm trying to think of a polite way to put it. <laughs> Um, but let's just say the main demographic there was uh, white, um, yeah. white socialist yeah. men, if you like. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, the, and they could not see the hypocrisy. They were uh, blasting Chumba Wumba, I get knocked down uh, yeah. out of PA yeah. as well. And that was because they cancelled uh, a screening of their documentary because apparently I'm far right because I did an interview with Doobie, who's um, a radical... Oh, yeah. Yep. A radical right wing YouTuber. So that made me a racist. They didn't do their homework though, because he's actually black. Yep. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, that got cancelled as a result. And all we're advocating is freedom of choice. You know, if you don't like Katie, you don't come don't come and watch her, you know, don't spoil it for uh, for those. Well I mean, I, I, I know I know Katie well, and um, I, I met her earlier this year and stuff. And and, and she all for, for the. I mean, as you said, no one's made to like. You don't have to like Katie Hopkins, but but you don't have to like anything if you don't want to. But that doesn't mean that you then demand that no one else gets to see it. So tell me, did the Katie concerts, did the, 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 the gigs, did they go ahead? Okay. They certainly did. I had to keep in touch with the police uh, throughout both of her shows. But I've got so much uh, respect for her because this hatred and vitriol that uh, follows her everywhere. She actually dressed up as uh, Phoebe, the activist vegan, and joined the protest to stand up to racism oh. uh, placard. <laughs> oh, she's good like that. Yeah. Yeah, she was able yeah. to sneak in the back lane, and um, mm. and uh, but she's a, a media manufactured monster. She really is the antithesis of what you, what the media want you to believe. And uh, context is everything as well. Yeah. You know, they were busy quoting stuff she had, had said in 2016 or whatever. But I only know her in the context of her comedy because I watched one of her reels on Mother's Day, and it really made me laugh and it's, it's the same set of humor that i shared with mum so um yeah. and then two days later i get a message uh, an email from her agent asking yeah. <laughs> sorry yeah. just looked at me <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right, Jed, let's move it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, I mean, Katie is, um, but Kate, I mean, I, I, Katie is the opposite to how people perceive her. I mean, she's, but but that's true probably of most of us. I, I remember walking through Birmingham Central, New, uh, Birmingham, was it, New Street Station in Birmingham. Katie and I, we were, we'd been doing something or wherever, and uh, we, we, we were being up for coffee. And, and honestly, I mean, we were. It was. It was in the morning time. I was just sitting having like like this, sitting having a coffee. And and, and like as, as, as she walked by, uh, walked by, a, some a couple of sort of predictable types sort of gave her some verbal abuse, you know. But to be fair to Katie, she. I mean, I would have just walked on by. Katie didn't. Katie stopped. And 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 I mean, she 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 was funny in terms of how she confronted them. But that, that, that's the thing. People like Katie should be given a, a, a venue. And I know it's very difficult, uh, Anna. And I know other uh, comedians, like, well, even, for example, we saw with Graham Linehan up in Edinburgh there. Did you see? He was, him and the other guys were, were Andrew Lawrence and so on and so forth. They were cancelled, uh, again, by an intolerant rabble who won't accept that people have the right to listen to stuff. And if they don't, if you, if you don't like it, you don't have to go. But I mean, uh, so did they? Did they protest both nights of the kitty? The kit both <laughs> nights, and they even organised woke fest as well. <laughs> so that took place in the government sponsored <clears throat> venues up the road, and we tried to. Um, I, I guess a friend of mine acted as mediator between the organisers, and uh, she said, "Oh, why don't uh, me and uh, Katie?" come up and uh, you can meet her and you know any grievances you have you can direct them 
directly to her. And then uh, 10 minutes later, he sends a, a message saying, oh, the venues are concerned about their license in case there's an altercation. You can come, but Anna and Hopkins can't. So as, as if we're going to be um, having 50 cups or something with the far left. It's just absolutely beyond. But uh, yeah, Woke Fest didn't look like much fun at all. No, it doesn't. <laughs> But, but but the other thing is th this Welsh government, this Mark Drakeford government that you, I mean, I've spoken to other good friends in, in Wales, uh, good, solid people of principle. And, and it's quite, I mean, it's a bit like in Scotland as well. I, I wondered, how did anyone survive Nicola Sturgeon during those years? But in the same regard, people like yourself, you have survived. You've gotten through the Drakeford thing, despite the onset. Unspeakable. I mean, I remember the images. Didn't he decide that in some of the supermarkets in Wales, the children's uh, toy area or whatever, that had to be uh, sort of sealed off because you could get the deadly COVID from toys. Do you remember that? What was that all? Of? What, so, so yeah, I mean, it must be hell really to live yeah. on onto that. Or am I, or, or am I, am I over exaggerating it? Tell me. No, it, it was. And uh, to be honest, as someone who didn't pay any attention uh, <laughs> to the rules, um, but uh, yeah, from a business perspective, it just didn't make any sense. It's absolutely bewildering as if he's got some sort of, uh, he's like a control freak or yeah. something. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, he's just a dithering, yeah. yeah. I yeah, really yeah. Want, not to swear. <laughs> yeah, but 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 the thing that worries me is whenever he does step down, um, I think his successor is likely to be an, a, an another clown, basically, in the form of who, who's his number two? There's a guy. There's another Welsh guy there. What's it? Uh, you might know his name. Um, oh, uh... another, he, he, he's another. Um, it, well, you know the way Humza Yusuf succeeded uh, uh, Nicholas Sturgeon because of the awkwardness on the camper vans and whatnot, uh, but we're not going to that. Um, the, uh, I, th I think you're going to have a similar scenario in, in, in Wales. And it, it's surprising. To, you see, in terms of Wales as a country, the obviously North Wales and South Wales, are there political differences between those areas, Anna? Or, Ooh, you know? um, no, I wouldn't say so, actually. It's just uh, always been heavily Labour and uh, you know I, I the mind boggles how he got voted in again for a second time well, you know and yeah. this 20 mile per hour thing he's introducing in a couple of yeah, weeks yeah 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 <laughs> Vaughn Vaughn getting or getting Vaughn that's the guy that's uh, it yes just told me that's who he is yeah mm -hmm. so uh i suspect he's going to be the succeed but, but who knows i mean uh yeah so uh yeah you, it's a real it's really tyrannical and again like i don't know you see swansea um like is, is swansea a really prosperous uh, town or city i mean is it i wouldn't have thought so so surely you'd want to help business independent business like yourself rather than basically terrorize it yeah, you, you'd think that would be the case. But, uh, you know, we've got four Costa Coffees in the town centre. And I'm lucky if I get three customers in the cafe during the day. And uh, so all the fast food places are doing really well. But the city centre is just desolate. And Swansea's got one of the worst cases of uh, spice use as well. And um, we get quite a few tourists because of our proximity to the train station. And so mm -hmm. many of them say they've been to some city centres in their time but none as deprived as uh, this one. And uh, it just seems that they're hell-bent on vanity projects uh, yeah. Yeah. In, uh, in Swansea. But there's such an apathy, like I said before. They're just so accepting of the, the status quo, you know, and how quickly people forget the torture we went through for, for two years. Well, see, this is what I was saying to you earlier when we were messaging each other, because there's a lot of... Um speculation and whatnot that, uh, yeah, I agree, Drakeford rigged the vote. Of course he did. They all rigged the vote splits, or they all rigged the votes. Uh, that democracy, I'm afraid, is not the, necessarily all that it appears. But there's talk of, well, masks might have to come back and we because of the new sub-variant, you know, which doesn't exist. But, uh, you know, the um, uh, how would you respond if they said, right, masks have to be worn? In your in your cinema, how would you respond to that? 
Oh, with that, that I'd, <laughs> I'd refuse to again. There's yeah. no way I'm, I'm going to go against my principles and uh, buy into the lie that uh, he continues to uh, perpetuate. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I would have thought the Welsh economy being what it is, like I don't think it's mega successful. But not that that bothers Drakeford. I don't think because then the the state, the the the, the part of the government can become even bigger because you don't have that fantastically functioning, you know, uh, an economy. But but I saw you, Anna, during this time back in when when you were being persecuted as emblemic of, uh, you know entrepreneurs, private business people, just trying to earn a living, trying to keep some sort of semblance of normality going. So it was shocking the way that they went after you and they brought you to court and all of that. I mean, and in the context of your mother, which I didn't know about, I mean, that must have been very stressful, Anna, to be honest, was it not? Oh, I was in the eye of the media storm for about three weeks and they railroaded me through the legal system. You know, I never had more than 24 hours to find legal representation. And um, it was definitely about uh, setting an example. But I got yeah. so many yeah. private messages, which is indicative of how scared people are to voice their opinion in public is what okay. happened to me. Shows yeah. Me. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's no doubt about it. What they do is they pick an individuals to make an example of them. In fact, actually, I've got a friend who's been on one of these shows with me in the past. And back in 2020, he and I, uh, along with many others, went to um, sort of, um, you know, anti-lockdown rallies and stuff like that. And he got a summons just last week, three years later, from the local police uh, demanding that he go along and uh, explain himself. And and you think to yourself, like, I don't know, as you say, like, it's not as if the police have not better things to be doing than chasing people like him and people like you, um, you know, for, for, for just trying to keep a semblance of normality. So so these people, I mean, I don't really, it stuns me when he was telling me, yeah, he received two summonses, actually, and his crime was to go to lockdown rallies, which I was there as well, by the way police force if you want to try your luck with me um but you know it, it just amazes me that so they still keep coming on it and that's why i think they might try to bring this stuff back they might they might succeed but they might try i think so that's a kind of disturbing sort of situation i think down the line as we go into autumn and winter yeah, because, you know, I'm not, I'm, this is, is difficult for everybody, you know, the cost of living being the way it is. And, uh, mm -hmm. of course, my industry uh, depends on disposable income, really. So, um, yeah. so yeah. we're the first to, first to suffer. But, um, yeah, it's all about uh, lining the pockets of the corporations. And uh, it just seems that we're trying to be trampled on. And I really feel that um, my position, me being a woman, uh, has uh, yeah. gone against me as well yeah yeah but yeah which is which is weird because it's all about female empowerment but here we have someone like you successful woman entrepreneur and, and yet the government has set you up to make an example of you to see, to make sure nobody else does what, what you do which is it's kind of again it's so the hypocrisy of the left doesn't it i mean they, they should have been hailing you as this is we want lots more annas all around the country surely that's what they would need but but not the way they've gone about it. They, you, no one wants to be on it. No, and it's I guess it's pressure saving face as well, really. You know, it's difficult to admit when you're wrong, and that's a strength as well. And um, and maybe that's what's uh, the local community that I've feel I've served and uh, given mm. a lot to. But you know, people are scared to show their support publicly for me so um i offer the cinema uh, space for free to um a couple of women's groups yeah. and um they uh stopped their sessions because i had uh, katie hopkins and that um so and um again swansea's a city of sanctuary so um they they won't have anything to do with me so it's a real shame that it's the minority groups that are yeah. actually suffering as a result of this false labeling and uh you know being in bed with the far right and um the crowdfunder so a crowdfunder was set up 
Yeah. And it was the fastest growing cause in the platform's history. And 61,000 was raised within uh, three weeks. And um, uh, when the money came through, I really wanted to do good with this money. So I got in touch with a, a, a fund that umbrellas five primary schools in Swansea that all live in stark poverty. And mm -hmm. uh, it took ages for the headmaster who spearheads this fund to get in touch. And when he finally did, he said, I'm I'm sorry about the delay. We have to have a board of governors meeting, and I'm really embarrassed to say, but Swansea Council cannot be seen to be taking 50p or 50,000 pounds from you because of where the money has come from. So the 4,000 people who have donated from all walks of life, all corners of the country, even at the other side of the globe, were oh. all branded far right, and these kids continue to starve all because of politics. And that just made me feel sick to my stomach when uh, he told me that. Um, that. Yeah, yeah. I, I take it Swansea. Council is a labor is it a labor council yeah yeah 40 years they've been uh in yeah. power <laughs> yeah yeah you see the big uh, that amount of time in power they become completely corrupted if they weren't to start with which they yeah it's all handshakes on the golf course <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 but but i mean i remember being in cardiff again just before lockdown and i didn't think cardiff was the most um amazing city i've ever been and i thought there was a bit of poverty and stuff around it as well back then so so i sort of think when i look at wales again it comes back to this people like you anna should be the people who are being encouraged incentivized supported and and the opposite is true and and, and can i just ask like whenever we had the lockdowns and all that, the big cinema houses—I mean, they could have they I think they could prop pro, they, they're probably able to fund it from their resources and whatnot. And the same with the, the big coffee houses and all of that. But the places like you, it's different because you know, unless you've got to spare a couple of million in the bank, how how how, how does it keep going? So th that puts small business at a disadvantage, doesn't it? The whole essence of restrictions and lockdowns and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I was uh, I accepted the bribe to close. I even put in an FOI request to the council to ask which if there are any businesses who uh, declined and uh, they said no. And of course, uh, everybody took that grant. But even with my bol uh, shutters bolted down, I was still having to pay bills and uh, overheads and things. I had to give £12,000 plus in refunds for being uh, closed. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so the, that crowdfunding money, I wasted 20000 on failed legal representation, you know, mm -hmm. and that system is, is just designed to benefit those that designed the system. You know, yep. they're, they're all in bed together. Um, and uh, yeah, it's got to a point where I'm really struggling to keep uh, keep afloat. Um, but the sound of freedom, we're we putting that on. And if it wasn't for uh, the sales of that, um, yeah. I'd really be struggling now. So because uh, I saw somebody asked me, I saw one of the comments come up. Uh, are you are, are you putting on the sound of freedom? So you are, yeah. Yes. 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 I've had the cinema nearly seven years now, and um, not once has a film ever garnered so much interest as The Sound of Freedom. It got to a point where we were getting several inquiries a day about whether we'd be putting it on. And uh, there's even uh, a couple who are coming all the way from Birmingham to watch it here so they can show their support for me. So uh, yeah. that's really, uh, really touching. Yeah. Yeah. You see, th th this might be the way things develop. Anna, you know, that there's almost like we've almost broken away from what was there before. And uh, yeah, I, I would imagine I'm just if there's anybody watching this whatsoever um, and wants wants to go to see the movie, then yeah, Anna, you know, and I, I suspect there'll be more stuff like that as well because again, it's this independent spirit. You know, you you have your independent cinema. I, I know so many independent creators who are um, doing stuff. And that interests this vast awakened audience that, uh, you know what I mean, maybe Katie plays to her audience and uh, she does it very, very well. And, and I think there is that group of big chunk of the population, or at least a percentage, that are really happy to support people like yourself, movies like that, Sound of Freedom, you know, and, 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 and so I take a bit of heart from that, you know, because uh, so in the sense of you could go and waste your money on... Uh, Barbie, 
Oh, mm -hmm. I'm, and even Oppenheimer, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure about that. Can anything coming out of Hollywood? I'm very suspicious of for yeah. all kinds of reasons, which we won't necessarily go into because we're on YouTube and we'll be thrown off if we suggest anything about Hollywood. But uh, yeah, I mean, so I have no confidence in that kind of stuff. But this other stuff, I have every interest in, and every you know, uh, and, and so uh, so it's great that there's venues like you who can potentially provide that because I've had people talk to me about where can we see this movie, you know, and I, I think where I live here in Northern Ireland, I don't believe it's. Uh, it's there's anywhere showing it um you know because because independent cinemas there are very few of them about no that's absolutely right and you know we're the only one in swansea so um but it would be it feels that we're becoming a place for the cancelled if yeah. you like because yeah. we're given freedom of choice freedom of voice yeah. so um so like when you mentioned graham linehan i've actually um yeah. emailed him uh because i've been left out for the second year running of the swansea fringe festival right. none no. of the band want to play here because of my uh, association with the far right um so i'm going to do a counter festival this year and i've asked him if he'd um headline it and it we're going to show uh comedy uh non-pc comedy films so um yes if yeah. uh, your yeah. listeners have any suggestions so we've come up with blazing saddles um, yeah yeah Dr. brian um yeah. what else yeah. is there um my mind's gone black now, but uh, but yes, I'm I, I'm calling it something that rhymes with fringe. <laughs> so what, I, I, you know, I, I I met Graham back in February. He was over um, uh, Kelly J. Uh, Kane Posey Parker. She was over in Belfast, and he was at the thing, and I was at the thing, and I was talking to him, and he's a lovely bloke. Uh, um, he's really uh, and and he's standing up for women. And he's standing mm. against some pretty despicable uh, um, people. And uh, but yet, you know, that cancellation of him at Edinburgh, and uh, you know, I think Andrew Doyle had organised that. I, I mean, but but that was just that. You know, that's the usual in trans in sort of tiny percentage who want to dictate to everybody. I Leslie says, what about Little Britain? What about any car any Carry On movie? That's yes, all good yes, fun. Yes, yeah, yes, that's what it on. Yeah, how it goes. but don't you think that you know we you're talking about putting on those kind of those non-politically they all have virtue and uh, like life of Brian probably prophetic actually to be honest uh, ironically given the subject but um, yeah I think people would love that um, you know especially if you're putting on the counter to the, <laughs> the official I want do you, do you know who's fronting the official uh, fringe Swansea fringe. Oh, well, it's sponsored by Swansea Council, of course, and mm. uh, Swansea Music Hub and the uh, venues um, who hosted Woke Fest. So all the venues take part in Swansea, uh, except mine, and their tagline is the Swansea Fringe, a festival for everyone. So we're doing the Swansea, a festival yes. for every... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. You see, and the good thing is we can all laugh at it, you know. I mean, uh, um, although I, I have to say, I must say, my sense of humor has really been a source of strength, and I think that's what Katie does so well, really. You yeah. know, you've yeah, got yeah. to have a sense of humor in this clown world, otherwise, we'd all be crying, I think. <laughs> well, well, when, you, when, when, when you know the sound, I'm sure if you don't, Katie, you know the stuff she's gone, been put through all the stuff but absolutely horrendous and yet she's almost it makes her stronger um and, yeah. and, and 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 i think that's great and it's, i can see i can feel that from you as well anna you know despite all the absolute crap that's been thrown your way by the welsh government by swansea council by the lefties uh the uh, uh someone says cnc uh, the cinnamon co is the quarks bar of Swansea, hashtag deep space nine. <laughs> uh, but right, but sir, I don't know what that means. Maybe Anna does, but uh, it sounds good. So uh, I, I, I'm sure you're right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, um, going through this adversity does it does make us stronger. If, if, as long as they don't crush us, and humour is maybe a thing that makes we can survive because of humour. Because without humour, it becomes very dark. 
But it's awful how uh, even our humour's being policed now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's incredible that comedy is so censored <laughs> these days. But 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 don't you think like some of the people, some of the comedians um, who even about four or five years ago would have been telling certain jokes, they, they're such cards in 2023. They won't say those things because they desperately want to be mainstream. They want to be doing, you know, the Edinburgh Fringe and all the rest of it. And so they sell out all their principles. And mm. uh, and, and and so it's, it, I find them deeply deeply unwatchable actually whereas you know I mean as I say I was at a thing with Katie was a headliner at it um, uh, Andrew Lawrence was there um, mm. uh, was it, Alistair Williams um, great and really funny people you know so there's lots of good comedy out there it's just it's not mainstream I see by the way you're getting a lot of love from the audience here I can see all the comments uh, Jason saying don't go over in the getters yeah you're a great person you say this is the thing Anna you know having gone through what you have you have inspired I can see even in this here all around the world actually people so you know it's, it's, it, it maybe is a consolation in, in the wee hours of the you know when you're wondering how things going to keep going that uh, a lot of people um, do do respect and admire what you did during those difficult couple of years yes and uh, i must also say thank you to those four thousand people who donated to the crowdfunder because if it wasn't for for them and i apologize that they get tarred with the the nazi uh brush but um but mm. yes i'm ever so grateful i haven't had a, a opportunity to uh, voice my gratitude for that yeah well but, well i think that just suggests to me that people connect to what you've on what you face, the, the the you know, I mean, the uh, as I say, I, I vividly remember conversations here in Northern Ireland with with fellow awakened people, and we're all saying, oh, that lady over in, in in is it Swansea? Look at look at what they're doing, and the you know shot the shuttering. I remember the shuttering image. I mean, that's what you'd expect in let's say totalitarian regimes, but then again, you've got you've got a totalitarian regime, haven't you? <laughs> But that's the thing, you know, there's no left and right anymore. It's, no. It feels like totalitarianism versus freedom now, yep. you know. Left and right are just two chicks of the same ass. Yep. <laughs> do, 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 I completely agree with you. I would have, up until 2020, saw myself as, broadly speaking, on the sort of right, small, sort of libertarian, small C conservative. Not anymore. No way. I see myself as 100 uh, Those labels do not matter. I, I'm sure like you, Anna, I've become really good friends with people from, from the other end of the political spectrum, but we share one thing in common. We believe in freedom. We believe in bodily autonomy. And uh, and, and it's great. It's, it's, it's quite liberating, actually, not to be in a particular camp. Plus, here in the UK, we've got a uni party anyway. So it's not as if you've got any choice, you know. I mean, I, I fear that in, in Wales, they're politically, um, there's, there's, you know, it's, it's all set up to keep the, the thing going. Um, even though it always amazes me when you look at a place like Swansea and, you know, like a council, how, why do people keep voting for a council that, that is running your, the, the, the place into the ground? Like, yes, it, it beggars belief, and um, yeah, I question the uh, authenticity of the <laughs> voting results. To be honest, but uh, shenanigans. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, we 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 better not because we're again because I've I've started for a, quite a while actually, Anna. I wouldn't do anything in YouTube because I I find it pretty contemptible. But mm. but. If, if you play the game and use code words, you can kind of get away with some of the stuff. So, yeah, I, I think the electoral shenanigans we saw across the Atlantic, you don't have to go to the States to see it. I reckon I reckon it's everywhere, not least in, in places like Swansea and, you know, broad, more broadly uh, across Wales. Scotland's another example of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, as well. As indeed is Westminster. I, haven't, I have no confidence in any of them. Did any politicians come to your side? during your time of trial? Um, no. Uh, there was a politician protesting amongst the, um, the socialists oh. against uh, Katie Hopkins. <laughs> 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 so, uh, 
So, uh, but yeah, no, I've even been in touch because my ward is the only ward with an independent uh, councillor. And yeah, uh, yeah he's uh, ignoring me now. Um, and probably, and I've even had friends who have been female friends who have been on Swansea Council and had to step down because of the misogyny and the and the corruption as well. So, um, mm. but yeah, no, I'm definitely public enemy number one in their eyes. I bruise their ego. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's pretty shocking that there's not one politician in the whole of Wales that came to say, Anna, I, you know, at least I'll try and stand by you and do what I can. Uh, I mean, that's pretty damning and... Uh, uh, were, were there any were there any high profile people that were able to help you or, or in any regard? Oh gosh, I'm trying to uh, remember now. Um, yeah, because it was all being in the media storm. You know, I was uh, surviving on like uh, three hours sleep a night, and of course. Yeah. Yeah mum's uh, care as well so I didn't really uh, I, I kind of shut it shut it all out as much as I could but when mum um, passed away I suddenly because my cinema I still had the shutters bolted to the ground you know I suddenly had all this time to kind of process yeah. that, uh, yeah. that um, yeah. storm I was uh, in so uh, so yes and it is incredible it almost felt like I was being protected in a certain way because I wasn't eating properly I was like a bag of nerves and uh mm. yeah I should have been struck down with something or other but uh somehow mm. something saw saw me through yeah I mean when, when you're in the media storm which you were in Anna you know not 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 many people go through what you've gone through to be honest you know um and uh I, I've I've had my minor little media storms over the year, but nothing on your scale. But but it is pretty horrendous. And unless you've been through it, it's, it's sometimes even hard to explain to others how, how awful it is, because it is awful. Well, yes, and especially as far as my children were concerned, you know, I was getting funny looks at the school gates and things, and I, that still happens now, to yeah. be honest. Um, yeah. But... Uh, but yes, it was, uh, and just how politics stole my the final moments of my from my mum as yep. well. And yep. but I was expected at that time to veto everybody who came to my hour of need, and um, reject their help based on their political uh, leanings. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's the general consensus of the. Uh, the local left but uh yes i've had enough of trying to appease them now oh yeah yeah and, uh, yeah i like you said earlier about being a place for the awakened and to put on yeah. uh, controversial films and give people the choice if they want to come and watch something or see somebody then uh, the choice is theirs to make yeah no I, 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 absolutely you know and and throughout all of this i think all you ever wanted to do was to provide people with a choice and, and and I think that's what distinguishes us from 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 others. You know, the the, the awakened people. Like I, I respect people's bodily autonomy. Do what you want. You know, mm. within reason. But um, uh, but but don't you dare tell me what I have to do. Don't don't dare because that's not going to work out well for you. You know. So I think uh, I see comments. Uh, Leslie says Anna is a strong lady, an example to us all. Uh, Blitzer says, Have your kids been bullied by your activism? Um, not to my knowledge, no, but um, I must admit they are stuck between two polarising viewpoints. Um, so um, their dad's very much the other end of the COVID scale. So uh, as we co-parent, you know, I feel really sorry for them being stuck between. But I, I trust them to make their own judgment and form their yeah, own sort of, opinions. Yeah. So, um, so yes, they're they're very politically aware, which you know it's a sad thing, really. You know, when I was nine, I don't remember um, mm -hmm. knowing who was, uh, you know, yeah. who was in yeah. power or anything like that. And you know, my youngest asked me when he was seven, uh, "How have you?" Uh, I was glad of the vaccine, and you haven't. And uh, uh, to explain, well, it's a, a choice. He's chosen to have it, and yeah. uh, it should yeah. always be your choice. Um, but you know, he's seven years old. You shouldn't be concerned about 
that kind of thing. She no, becomes it's a big little boy. So I, I absolutely agree. It's awful, but but that's not your fault. That's the government and the politicians and the media that have caused this whole um, almost a generation of kids to be almost hot pilled by all the kind of nonsense that they've been pushing at us and that they continue to they continue to do so. Anna, it's been a real um, Really interesting chatting to you. I absolutely express my own admiration for what you're doing and what you've done. And I can see across the different streams here, I'm not alone. I think uh, universal uh, admiration for you. And uh, uh, just as it's going on underneath the screen, uh, you can support Cinema and Co. And you can go to the website, uh, Cinema and Co. They're also, you're also on, uh, I think, the uh, Twitters as well, aren't you? So uh, mm -hmm. you, can, you can check them uh, and support uh, Anna there. Listen, folks, we have to support people like Anna Redfern and Cinema and Co. Because, um, you know, uh, we're trying to be apart from this corrupted mass uh, that we've all woken up to over the past couple of years. And the more successful we can make people like Anna, the, the better I think we will all be. So, Anna, as I said, uh, well done for everything that you have done. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry about all those trials that they've put you through. But it seems to me that uh, there's an old saying, the finest steel is forged in the hottest fire. So you've gone through a lot of fire and a lot of heat. But I think at the end of it, you've emerged as a very fine, fine piece of steel, which is what we need in this uh, culture war and other wars that we're engaged in. Right, Anna, it, that's all from me, everybody, different streams. Thank you all very much. If you're watching this live, if you're watching this in replay, um, do make sure you drop a comment or whatever. And uh, I read the uh, develop, or we return live tomorrow night for our Thursday 8 p.m. live podcast. Uh, check that one out. And then finally, final shout out. I'm on with um, uh, Jackie DeVoy, if you know Jackie DeVoy, uh, on Friday night. Uh, Matt Letizia, uh, uh Leilani uh, Doubting, and uh, yours truly. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a banter on, on Friday night. So I hope you'll maybe tune in and support Jackie as well. So look, thank you all very much, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Anna. And catch you all soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.